the process of uh, Niner Bluing uh, some Colt replica uh, Uberti hardware. See, here's your way it'll start out. Go ahead and get this bent the right direction here. I don't have a temperature regulator on this little one yet, so for now, I'm just having to plug it in as needed. Don't have much in there, so not too worried about sloshing. Definitely recommend using a little bit better PPE than what I am right here. We're down to about 550 degrees here. I say ideal you'll be around 600. But I wanted to go ahead and drop this in and see how it does at 550. It'll warm up pretty quick. Go ahead and you drop it down in there and let it get a little crystallization on it. Brush off any of the crystals that have amassed and then drop it back down in until it gets to the color you're looking for. Now we're up to coming up on 575 on the temperature. Hand where y'all can see. Slosh it around a little to keep your crystals from forming. Here's one that I've already done that gives you any idea of the color that you're going to get. Starting to get a straw brown color now. And it'll go through different color stages. So you can actually choose your color. You can go with brown, uh, yellow. You can get a blue, a more black color. You can get iridescent colors in there. And it's tempering this all at the same time. If I really wanted to temper it, I had to leave it in a good bit longer. Now we're at 600 degrees. Definitely starting to get a little more, a little more brown. Getting darker. Darker yet. Darker. Now we're coming up on 650 on temperature. Getting darker, and I'm kicking the camera. Thank you, John. Still wanting to be real careful there, because it'd be a bad day to get that sloshed on you. Y'all can see the color now, looking pretty dark, having a little bit of that blue color to it. in just a hair longer. Ah. 
and then you want to quench it in some water. Once you've done that, get them out of that water, and you want to oil them well. Doesn't have to happen immediately, but you want to oil them pretty quickly after. And you want to make sure, this is very important, you want to make sure that you do not put any water down into your hot, into your hot salt. That's very important. That's an easy one to look over from time to time when you're busy trying to do a run of these, but trust me, it's not something that you'll do more than once. Brush off any of the crystals that may have formed on it. That noise you hear is my my new dog, crazy as a bat. That's not his name. <laughs> Anyways, you get the idea. Here's what the niter bluing salts looks like. Uh, after it's cooled down, you can see I'm touching the thing. It just basically turns back down to a paste. And uh, in here, uh, some of the parts that I did, um, they turned out real, real good for the first time I used it and done it. Now that hammer, the discoloration in it, that is the factory finish. It was a uh, color case hardened. And uh, so it's supposed to have those strange colorings to it. But the top of the hammer, like where your thumb would go, now that, uh, that was, there was no bluing on it at all. It was worn off, and I dipped it back into the niter bluing and uh, put a nice good finish on there. All that hardware, after we get it out of there, we may end up, I'm trying to darken that some of those bolts back up a little bit more. I don't know. We're just going to see how it works out. Um, and I, I'll definitely have some more videos of the niter bluing. Um, that's what we're dealing with is the Brownells niter bluing. Um, it's, it's pretty neat stuff. And uh, something else that I picked up. And let's see here. Is this right here? This is the uh, Cero Safe uh, for chamber casting. I had some, but uh, I have no idea what happened to it. It had been used, and uh, I've got a couple. I got a Swiss uh, bolt action Swiss that I believe is chambered in 308. And I'm going to do a chamber casting on it, and uh, I'll show you all how to do that, and uh, we'll double check and make sure.